Who doesn't yeah. think you know the word visceral people? Well, it's a lot of syllables for a bloke from Coventry. <laughs> <laughs> we have a two-syllable cat where I'm from. Okay, dude, that guy deserves applause. That was funny. Are these the FOBs? As the Pyrostar system is... Ooh, man, Pyro gets me so excited with what's coming up here. Lawless, man. this means that combat can break out anywhere. Social spaces can turn into combat spaces in the blink of an eye. The main experience we're trying to build is something that feels a bit more, like, wild and not the typical thing that you've seen in Stanton. So the themes are a bit more chaotic than you'd expect. So, for example, if you're shopping and then someone decides to take a firefight with you because they think your armor's cool and they want it, you can jump over that kiosk, sit behind that cover and return fire. So you're basically turning this shopping mall, which you were at previously, into a combat zone. These spaces were built modularly with various different overlays that had to stitch together, but also make sure that it accounted for a fair combat fight and easy navigation for both vehicles and any other light elements that you want to be able to bring to these places. As for the trade posts, because of their ever-shifting inventory of things they could sell, could buy, things being on display, this changes the layout of the trade post itself. Taking everyday objects in the trading post, like uh, weapon terminals, something that you would purchase, would then, as soon as a fight is initiated, that becomes cover. You would be using these things to help yourself to not get shot by the enemy, essentially. So you could be ducking behind cover behind a ship component that you want to purchase for your ship later, but first you've got to take care of this rival gang attacking you. That's tight, man. Coming into a situation where guns are just blazing and you have to deal with that shit. That is what a lawless area should be. Yeah. Yeah. Even though we know the NPCs, <laughs> even though the NPCs aren't going to be reacting the way that we want, and it'll be pretty much of a shit storm. At least the foundation is laid somewhere underneath all of the fucked up lag. <laughs> Once it gets nailed down, it's going to act the way that it's supposed to, which is lawless. And that is the point. And that is what I want. I want there to be chaos in every area at any time possible. I don't want any safety in lawless based systems. Let me let me repeat this so everybody understands. I want not one centimeter of pyro or any lawless system to be safe. Full stop. Afterwards, you can decide, hey, I need to grab a... That's where I'm heading. Actually, Wixie, funny that you mentioned it. Wixie said, so Detroit? <laughs> That's actually where I'm heading my... <laughs> My nieces uh, are graduating, and that is... We'll be going to uh, a park in an area that's, you know, hey, it's economically depressed, and uh, we that's where I'm going to be spending this weekend up in Detroit. So, yes, exactly like Detroit. A multi-tool for this other salvage mission I need to go to. So after the firefight is finished, he goes to the counter, pick up your multi-tool with a salvage component, <laughs> pay for it, chip's done, and off you head out. I love Detroit, though, seriously. Taking what we've learned and the setups from Squadron 42 to Pyro, for example, NPCs <laughs> having specific archetypes and having more specific classes, using things like defend areas and keeping NPCs in specific areas. Pyro, we're taking oh, yeah. that to the next level where we're having more specific areas used for defenses and things like that and making areas stay in NPCs. We're also using something called schedule areas, which basically enforces NPCs to stay within a certain vicinity in combat. For 4.0, with server meshing, we expect higher server frame rates. So the idea is that you'll get a much more engaging AI experience. Let's talk about... Oh, okay. All right, let's just see how that pans out. <laughs> Some of those classes. We have what we call our techie, which typically features light armor and SMGs, and they have more aggressive traits. So they're focused on getting close to you and flushing you out. Similar with our CQC class, which typically has shotguns, and obviously they have the much higher aggression version. We've seen okay. us talk about traits at CitizenCon, and this is 
putting that work in the persistent universe and allowing us to create more dynamic situations. Okay. We're doing other things as well. For example, we're making NPCs hold up in rooms with shotguns and things like that. So I like that they're starting to separate NPCs by combat types. It's very, very cool. Very cool. I hope I hope we see more of this. So when you have to eliminate a specific target and you're going into a room, those guys are specifically holding up there and you're kind of having a tug of war of them in close quarters environments versus them just kind of walking around the area. With our juggernaut enemy, you'll have seen that that's the incredibly highly healthed LMG enemy, which ignores all shooting restrictions, can focus on pushing the player and shooting them out, and basically being that slow moving target that walks towards you. Similar including things like copions into battle. One of the factions has pet copions, All and right. copions fight alongside them. And Chaos. that is fantastic Chaos. because it gives you a different silhouette when you're fighting these factions. You know, you have to shoot a lot lower, you have to be a lot more conscious because they're a lot quicker than a human being, and just these nice little new additions to combat. I don't think said which faction. We're integrating more things in terms of having people who are more aggressive, having different factions, having different accuracy profiles, and making the factions in Pyro feeling a bit more versatile and different to when you fight each other. These encounters are a lot more crafted and bespoke. Pyro is a system of conflict, and in there there's many factions vying over control. When you arrive at Pyro, one of the first things you want to do is enlist one of the two primary factions. The headhunters have... Dude, these helmets though, man. <laughs> ...have more tiered structured armor, which you can acquire. The more higher tiered the armor is, What's the up, more tanky and resistant those enemies 33 are. 33 months like a boss, As thanks, a bro. Hunter, you might be hovering around the Sunset Mesa, trying to think of how you're going to get close by. You would land your ships under the cover of darkness. You're taking your ground vehicle to the outpost. You're then getting out, trying to sneak past the outer perimeter, and eventually navigating your way down to either the gas tanks or to the main landing pit itself and finding the exact critical point that would break the entire operation at the scrapyard. Citizens of Prosperity have much higher and deadly accuracy. They also have more civil weaponry versus criminal weaponry as well, so you'll see things more like bearings and so on and so forth, versus other more lawless factions which typically have things like castic arms. If you're aligned with the Citizens for Prosperity... Can I just, like, uh, drop a bomb on it? <laughs> <laughs> you dropped the bomb on me, baby. <laughs> you dropped the bomb on me. Look at this. Oh, I want to visit this. I would love to visit this. Ah, okay, cool. Clear. Clear. You might be given a mission to go to Rustville and actually head down into the canyons That's and try to steal some of their scrap from their derelict ships in the base of the canyons. Because of Power One's unique terrain where Rustville is located, you will need to get into your ground vehicle again, navigate through all the twisting canyons and ravines, and use your multi tool to steal as much scrap as possible to end up sabotaging the unlimited supply of scrap that the headhunters at Rustville have got. So, regardless if you side with headhunters or citizens of prosperity, you will both be able to fight the Xeno threat. These. I mean, I would have to say headhunters. Citizen of prosperity sounds like some bullshit. I mean, like, give me a break. Get get out of here with that. I want I want some like apocalyptic sounding shit, you know? Hey to everybody. They are operating out of Pyro 2, up, 3, and Pyro 6. The Zenith threat is more what you'd think of as a PMC in terms of how you fight them and how they behave. They're a lot more cautious. They're a lot more. I, I like how I like how the pirating factions don't even like Xeno threat, right? Stunner says nobody likes Xeno threat. <laughs> Careful, you know, they won't try rush out of cover. They play a lot Hell more yes defensively. It is, Mel. We can use our trait system to inform how they make combat decisions. So where you'd expect someone like the Headhunters to be a bit more, you know, run at you, push you out, the Xenothreat characters will be a lot more cautious and stationary and prefer to stay in cover and take long shots. And they'll have a much higher accuracy profile, but they'll shoot for much shorter durations, so they can serve that ammo a lot more. A place we're going to fight Xenothreat is at the Last Ditch Settlement on Pyro 2. Last Ditch is another large... These goddamn environments, though. Holy God, this is going to be amazing. All the bullshit you're hearing right now and all the whining and all the upset, that shit disappears so fast, doesn't it? 
Like, watch how excited everybody's going to get, you know? <laughs> like, it disappears as fast as it comes in, man. How many cycles have we been through already? These cycles are ridiculous at this point. It's so easy for me to figure out what's going to happen next, man. It's like reading a script. Is at the last ditch settlement on Pyro 2. Every last time, ditch man. is another large, lawless settlement. We have a town close by it and then different mining operations between the, the village and the mining tower. And it's kind of a callback to the history of the system where there was once these mega corporate. This is some Mad Max looking shit, by the way. Have you guys seen Furiosa yet on HBO? Holy shit, I caught that the other weekend with Christy. I have to say that's one of the best movies I've seen in a very long time. And if you guys have not checked that out, check out Furiosa, dudes. I didn't even understand that was a prequel. You know, I was like, holy shit, this was good. It was it was good, man. This is giving me Mad Max vibes. Operations in Pyro that would do these large scale mining operations. It's a vital part in the, the Pyro ecosystem for these outlaw gangs to control. So we can also see here that there is fortifications, but they're, they're mainly around the village in which these gangs operate. But interestingly, it's almost built on three levels. There's like a main habitation area on top of this bluff. And then just down from that is the refinery area. And then right at the base of the super large mega this mining is structure this is, is a small sort of extraction. They got it. They got this down. They got the feels down. You, you're feeling the feels in Pyro. Everything has to be chaos. Everything has to be danger. There has to be no safe spaces. And they literally encapsulated it perfectly. The art... The art guys got this like 110%. Everything I'm feeling from all these environments, all these structures, the way the layouts are, the factions that are there, like everything about Pyro is, they nailed it. They literally nailed it. An area in an old kind of quarry should make for some very interesting fights, especially as you move between those sort of three sub locations within the larger location. I hope that the player will get a sense of, of trying to stop Xenu threats with their evil deeds. Shadowfall is another Xenothreat outpost. It's quite a large Xenothreat outpost that lives in the shadow of this mountain on Pyro 3 and kind of just sits on the shore of this lake. God damn. Fucking beautiful dystopian and all different things together. Mission. It is so dead on man they they nailed it if they did this good with pyro this makes me excited for other systems I, the art department is so underrated like they literally nailed it on pyro like to imagine the other systems and and how they're gonna be like fashioned man i feel confident that they're gonna nail these like alien planets and it's gonna be ridiculously cool this location hits different. <laughs> it's uh, a location just like the Outlaw locations, but we can feel that things have been turned up further. It is not only is it chaos, but it is now a structured chaos. There's fire and there's be cool, these spice Chris. barricades that They're make up the place so around it. Cool. Within the Homestead location, we have a lot of elevated positions that the player will look to. We'll see that there is a lot of like a scaffolding buildup and it feels like a, a fortified position. So in 3.23, we added sniper NPCs to the distribution centers. In 4.0, we're going further on. Things that people fail to realize are how many more systems are coming on board quite literally quickly after dynamic server meshing gets nailed down, which will take a long time. That undoubtedly will take a long time before we get dynamic server meshing the way we want it. But when it does happen and all the fucking people like flip their fucking script and say, oh my God, this is the best thing ever instead of bitching all the time. And when, when they do it, when they do it and things start to stabilize, the systems are going to start rolling out like nuts and, and every system's going to have like a design affiliated with the lore and the, and the, and According to the alien species, where you're at, the security, you know, it's, it's going to embody all of it. And that's why I say, like, the art department at Cloud Imperium is just so fucking underrated. To be able to do this, and then the, these, these areas are existing, that you're flying around literally in space, say you're somewhere in Stan, and then next door in Pyro, this place is here, just like this, to land on and look at any time you fucking want to, is literally a marvel. 
where are, where are the people talking about how amazing that is? <laughs> that that this is actually currently like existing while you're flying around in another system. Well, not yet, but soon enough. There are going to be so many cool places to go to and the vibes on every different place. And they're all going to be actually on, ready to visit at any point in time. That's that's crazy to me. That's literally nuts. On that and adding specific watch nests and things like that to keep these snipers in. So you'll have to be careful and keep an eye on for these outposts and these high elevation where snipers could essentially hit you from. How we're validating combat is ensuring that the players can have a lot more stealthy approach, have a lot more overview of what their targets are doing and where they're going. So you could use elevation to plan things out, such things as a comms tower, such things as cliff edges. You can basically survey over the trade post or the outpost itself. You could look at key things. Does it have automated weapon systems there? Does it have primary, secondary and tertiary pathing to allow the player in? It's all about defensive structures, about obstructing the player in order to get to its objective with a lot of anti-air turrets littered around the location. You are going to need to use your aerial support to take out these defensive measures so that you can even get people close to the location. Wow. Eventually, you can pull in your ground vehicles, drop off an elite squad. You can stealth through the scrapyard, you can stealth by the nearby lake comes through the derelict outpost section, finally clearing out Xeno throughout once and for all. Well, until they come back. From another outpost. <laughs> it's definitely a place that will just feel very hostile to the player. And you feel like this is a location that has a purpose within the universe and that it's important for these outlaw gangs to protect what they have going right here. In 4.0, you can expect a lot more crafted, engaging combat experience. I'm wondering what spawn times are. I'm wondering how often these forward operating bases will be farmed. There's a lot of questions I have. These could be like continually farmed by people. I'm not quite sure. I think this is just like training grounds for how to fuck somebody else's base up in another organization, a player, a player base organization. Like this is like, how do you fuck up a player organization's base 101? Like you want to start training? Here's how you do it. Start with the NPC forward operating bases and use these as, as a strategic tool for the future when people can do land claims and players have their own bases. Use these as strategic tools to fucking own up this base and then do it on a player organization base. Like that's kind of like how I see things shaping up here. This is baby steps. This is step one. And, you know, once once we see more information at CitizenCon from land claims, I think that's going to be pretty amazing. Hopefully we get some economic panel there that talks about what we're going to get with Star Sim. I honestly can't wait for CitizenCon. I know everybody's like, oh, who gives a fuck, blah, blah, blah. Everything's late anyway, and I don't care anymore. Ugh, everything's late, I don't care anymore. Ugh. <laughs> but personally, me, I'm very excited about CitizenCon because I want to hear what's coming up with the economy. I will get mad if it's not enough. I will be very angry. I will I will have a lot of rants and tirades both at Citizen Con and many highlights afterwards if I do not hear what I want in terms of the uh, the economic gameplay uh, because I believe it's the backbone moving forward here. Especially, I hope that they get the economy down before they start talking about like you know serious uh, land based mechanics. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see experiences with new archetypes, enemies using new weapons, yep. fighting animals alongside humans, and they all could. sorts of... Chris says they'll probably start selling more land plots. Yeah, I mean, they could. They could, Chris. I wouldn't put it past them, you know? Absolute crazy that you expect from Pyro. <laughs> I love it. All right. All right. Bosh. Daleks. Yep. I love that. Can we go back? I gotta go back to that. Hold on a moment. That's fucking perfect. Absolute crazy that you expect from Pyro. <laughs> that was awesome. Well, what more can I add? We always knew there'd be a lot of combat in Pyro, but with the addition of more AI archetypes from Squadron and the anticipated performance improvements generated by server meshing, we're hoping to deliver an experience that's more dangerous, engaging, and heck, I'm not from Coventry, so I can say it, visceral for our players. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the people and process of game development with you. And we'll see you all here next week 
for a look at characters and creatures in 4.0. Okay, cool. Listen, I know a lot of people are upset and frustrated, but take a breath. Don't worry, guys. I've been doing this over 10 years, and I can tell you I'm very happy with what I've been seeing. There's progress. It's slow. And and just realize this is just going to take a long time. So, you know, if you get frustrated easily because you're watching content from a content creator who's telling you the, the newest bit of, you know, clickbait shit and why they're late and they're monetizing you just because that's their livelihoods, just take a breath, man. Just take a breath and realize, man, there's plenty of other things to do while you're waiting for this. There's no, there's really literally nothing you can do other than stop spending. Like if you want to add pressure to cloud Imperium, just stop spending. They'll listen to the pocketbooks, man. So like, if you're that upset about the progress, don't, don't spend any money and encourage others not to as well. If you want to apply some type of pressure to me personally, I'm fine. If I see something I like, I'll pledge and I'll just continue to wait and I'm okay with it. It's fine. It's not that big of a fucking deal, man. In the grand scheme of life, it's a game that I feel like is going to give us the the thrill and the... I, I believe it's going to give us everything we wanted out of a fucking game. I, I just... I, I think it is the only thing out there that is what I call the everything game, man. Like, what they're trying to do is so huge. The scale is so large. And I say this all the time. Name me one other project. Name me one other project that's trying to do this. I don't. I don't see one. But we are going to watch tomorrow. There's actually uh, names keep coming in, and we compare them to Star Citizen. So on tomorrow's show, on the morning show, we're actually going to look at a new title that somebody says is the scale of Star Citizen, and we're going to compare it to Star Citizen. Last week, what did we watch last week? Do you remember? can't remember the title we watched last week for the stars, I believe. And everybody was like, Ooh, snail games pass, pass. And I don't know much about snail games, but I think that video got about 5,000 views. Uh, it looked very interesting to me, but there was so much negative feedback with fans saying that snail games was absolute shite that it made me go, Whoa, wait, maybe I don't want to look at for the stars anymore, but for the stars looked okay. Looked great. In fact, but the fact that it was made by Snail Games, everybody had an issue. Everybody was upset. It's crazy. Anyway, if you're still watching on YouTube, thanks for watching the Inside Star Citizen Review. We will be giving away a Santaki yeah, eye here in about an hour's time. If you're here live, you're going to want to uh, join up on that giveaway right here. And uh, we'll be spinning a wheel for one lucky member, either a YouTube member or a patron on, uh, of DG360. And uh, if you are on YouTube and you have not become a member yet, go in the description Check us out, monthly giveaways, and you're automatically entered once you become a member. Thank you for all your love and support. And now it's time for Star Citizen After Dark.